May I request the Vice Chancellor, Father Stephen Marvelli, to deliver the welcome address and to present a report of the university. Your Excellency Sri Banwari Lal Purohit, Honorable Governor and Visitor to our University and the Presiding Officer at this Convocation of the University this evening. Reverend Father V. M. Thomas, our Provincial and, and Chancellor, members of the Governing Body, members of the Board of Management, eminent guests from universities and colleges, members of the faculty and staff of, the, of our university, our graduating students and their parents, friends and well-wishers, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Assam Don Bosco University. A very pleasant evening and a warm welcome also to the sixth convocation of our university being held today. We feel privileged to have you all here today to share our joy as the sixth batch of graduates of our university, this time over 700 of them, are awarded their degrees and their diplomas. I say again, a very warm welcome to every one of you. A word of welcome to our chief guest and president of the function, to our honorable governor. He is most heartily welcome in our midst. Welcome, Your Excellency. Very graciously, he accepted our invitation to be with us this evening. As governor, he has a very packed schedule, as he also handles the additional responsibility for another state. Still, he told me when I went to, uh, when I went to invite him that nothing would hold him back from being here at the convocation of our university. Thank you very much, sir, for keeping that pledge. Your august presence here this evening adds gravity to this fun function and brings cheer to the hundreds of graduates who are gathered here in front of us today. They're eager to flap their wings and fly away from this cocoon to the larger world of reality and work. I'm sure you will have much to share with them and with us. Wisdom born out of your many, many years of public service. We do look forward to your words of advice and guidance. May I request everyone present to stand up and extend to His Excellency a very warm welcome by a very warm round of applause. A word of welcome to our graduates who are gathered in big numbers today. A convocation is always a celebration. A celebration because it marks a milestone in one's life. No two individuals reach that milestone in the same way. The journeys are different, but all of us hope that our journeys will be meaningful and we are confident that our journeys will be meaningful. And, it is, and that is why at the last convocation, we celebrated this particular aspect of journeying together in hope. Let me also add a special word of welcome to the graduates of DBU Global, our online students. All study is demanding, as the graduates today have already discovered. Fitting study around social activities, work and family commitments is always a challenge, a very big challenge. And meeting this challenge successfully is enormously satisfying. In this context, I want to acknowledge the presence this evening, especially of our graduates from abroad, from 42 countries who have graduated today, out of our students from 112 countries, who have completed their studies through distance learning through DBU Global our Center for Open and Distance Education. The fact that most of them are working professionals 
makes it all the more significant that they are here today. Lifelong learning is what we promote and what we do. And this is a feature that makes Don Bosco University truly unique and universal in its quest to offer a truly global higher education. To the parents of our graduates and their families who have accompanied them today in larger numbers than usual, graduation is an important milestone for the families too. A number of you are accompanied by your dear ones, the graduates. I can see the joy in their faces. I only say welcome and God bless you. Your support for your wards and children on this journey has made all the difference for your children between arriving at the goal and dro or dropping by the wayside. I'm sure you too are beaming with pride today as they step out this evening to the wider world with all its attendant joys and struggles. And to all our guests who are with us today here to share our joy, let me extend a warm welcome to you all. We have a number of eminent academicians among us, members of the Legislative Assembly, eminent professors from neighboring universities and colleges, representatives from industry and commerce, heads of institutions from around the state, parents of some of our graduates. We are glad that you have come to share our joy let me say again, welcome to Don Bosco University. Let me now get on to the task of sharing with you a very brief report on the university. A word of welcome from the Vice Chancellor is not complete without giving you a summary, in a summary fashion, what we've been doing since the last convocation. In the field of academics, the university has launched three significant programs on campus. A bachelor, of arts in, uh, a bachelor in Arts with majors in Mass Communication, English, Education and Psychology and two Masters, one in Zoology, one in Chemistry. As in other years too, this summer saw an incredibly active Azara campus and Tapesia campus with an array of summer programs, workshops, internships, conferences organized by our various departments summer schools, summer workshops, crash courses. These have come to stay as a regular feature of life at the university. You have in your booklet there the number of journals that we are publishing. And I can say with a sense of pride that each of these journals have found a place in the recognized journals published by the University Grants Commission. In the area of research, the buzzword is research in the university and the climate has been created for that. Let me just share with you one or two statistics that stand out when we say we are serious about research. 61.57% of our faculty today are doctors, PhD holders. That is 141 of them out of 221 full-time faculty members. They have completed their doctorate. And another 48, that is 20.96% of our entire faculty, are in various stages of completing their doctorate. Put together, that makes almost 70% of our staff as persons who are qualified with their doctorate, which I do not think even very well established universities are able to reach. That's an enviable record for even very well established universities. It's also a matter of pride for us that the number of papers published in journals of repute comes to a healthy 1.04 per member of the faculty. Of course, most of these arise out of their doctoral research or their research projects. Seminars, just to give you a, a, a glimpse into that, over 30 of them have been held this year alone and we are still having three, four months to go. Our faculty-student ratio is 1 is to 8.9, say 1 is to 9. That's an enviable, enviable ratio for practically all the universities, which most of the old and established universities are not able to reach. It's also a matter of pride that we have today 241 research scholars in various stages of pursuing their doctoral studies. And uh, that is in 19 disciplines. 
Apart from them, 18 of them have been awarded doctorates. Six of them are here with us today as they graduate. In the area of infrastructure development, we have made steady progress, especially in equipping our Tapesia campus with the following facilities. A second academic block with an area of 1,10,000 square feet to accommodate about 2,400 students and faculty. A third hostel for women with a capacity for 235 students. A second multi-cuisine food court to seat 350 students at a time. And a university service center that is just being completed to accommodate a crash, a medical center, a cooperative, general store, and a security office. Work has just begun also to equip this campus with a 160 kilowatt solar solar plant that and another one of similar capacity at Tapesia that should substantially reduce our dependence on the public grid. And while I speak about infrastructure development, we cannot but remember the generosity of the many friends and collaborators that make this dream take shape. Friends who have walked with us, shared our burdens, propped us up, and rejoiced with us at every tiny step that we took forward. On this occasion of the sixth convocation, we remember them gratefully and we pray that God blesses every one of them. In the, in the area of quality assurance, we hold the unique distinction of being the youngest university in the country to have been accredited by NAC within five years of establishment. We have now applied for a reassessment of our accreditation and within the next two months, we have every hope that we will get the highest grade, A grade from the, uh, from the National Assessment and Accreditation Council that will put us among the first and second tiers of universities among the 780 odd universities in the country. Our internal quality assurance cell, IQAC, has been an active catalyst in setting precise objectives to be met, monitoring and documenting subsequent performance, and always keeping us on our toes by shifting the goalposts all the time, goalposts in meeting quality requirements. This cell was recently reconstituted with 20 members representing all the stakeholders of the university. In pursuance of the goals set by the IQAC in the previous years, we have completed an internal audit of our admission process, another of our examination process. We set up a task force to recommend the adoption of online courses for our campus programs and to study the research climate in the university. Most of their recommendations have been put into active use. And on the recommendation, one of the recommendations regarding research, we have allocated funds now for every member of the staff for research initiatives to be taken up now during their career here in the university. Currently, we are also engaged in finalizing the adoption of a mission mode to ensure innovation and to set in place a variety of initiatives to ensure the protection of biodiversity in our campuses and to promote the concept of green campus. Within the next months, you should be able to see very substantive results coming out of this initiative. Uh, in the booklet that you have, you have a lot of current statistics on various parameters. Regarding the programs of study, we have 12 graduate programs, 15 postgraduate programs, and 19 doctoral programs. The list is there for you. Students, we have 2,043 students on campus. 4,344 4, students under distance education and over 8,000 students pursuing a variety of free certificate courses on our online portal. The details are given in the two tables that you have over there. Regarding our graduating students, we have 728 students graduating today, 419 from our campus programs, and 309 from our distance education programs. The details are given in the booklet. You also have a list there of those who have topped their studies in the various streams of uh, studies, various courses, uh, 16 of them qualifying for the gold medal of the universities, 
You will be meeting them later in the program as we congratulate them and award them the gold medals. I'd like to draw your attention to two very distinctive gold medals that we grant award every year. The Chancellor's Gold Medal for the most significant contribution to campus life from among the postgraduate students. It's being awarded this year to a student of management, Amar Kujur. The Vice Chancellor's Gold Medal for the most significant contribution to campus life from our graduate students this year is being awarded to a student of computer science and engineering, Rachel George. You will again meet them shortly as we award them. We have at the moment in the table that follows 157 full-time faculty and if we include also our adjunct faculty, we have 174 faculty, non-teaching staff that includes administrative, library, office, technical and service and maintenance staff are 95 which is a very healthy ratio compared to the number of students that we serve. In the next two pages, you have a list of the current research projects that are going on under funding from a variety of sources, most of them in government. And then you have a very brief write-up on the university set on very strong foundations. I'm not going to read all that, but it is speaking basically about a very robust uh, a very a, a series of robust pillars that we have put up to see that our university is very strongly founded and it will be so for years to come. We have a concept paper that we follow very closely. We have a governance structure that is uh, at the back, uh, that is a backbone of everything that we do here. We have a well-oiled financial administrative mechanism in place. We have a sustainability plan we have a very well running human resource management system and we have meticulously planned personal and professional training programs for our faculty and staff. Taken together, these strengths have contributed in ample measure towards the creation of a culture in Don Bosco University that is uniquely our own, that energizes us in all that we do and knits us together into one educative community. I would invite you to look around our campus, look into our classrooms and research labs, look at the camaraderie that exists among our staff, students and faculty that cuts across especially all distinctions here at the campus. And that's what we take pride in. That's what we call Don Bosco's system of education in practice. Let me conclude these words of welcome and this brief report on the university with a few words addressed directly to our graduating class of this year, 728 of them. A good number of them are present here, a number of them have applied for their degree in absentia. And these words are specifically for you. You have been intimate players here at the university for the last two, three or four years and some on online students, maybe even for a year or two more. It has brought us much joy to hear you say again and again that Don Bosco University is a good place to be in, a good place to learn, a good place to work, and an excellent place to grow, both academically and as persons. It is you as our ambassadors and your achievements that will tell the world about what an ideal Don Bosco University graduate looks like. And that's what we look forward to you being in the years to come. As you leave this atrium today to start the next lap of your journey, you take with you the knowledge, the professional skills, and the maturity to make a major contribution in your own areas of professional expertise and to society at large. I'm sure you will use those attributes wisely and as a graduate, as a proud graduate of Don Bosco University, we shall watch with delight as the tales of your success and contribution trickle back to us in the years to come. And those tales, as it has always been, will be about what you do with the education and experience you have acquired here at the university and what life has taught you along the way. About how you respond to every opportunity that will come your way every single day of, the, of, of your life. 
and that is why it is emblazoned in big characters at the background here carpe diem seize the day don't let any opportunity pass you by those are a given i keep hearing about such wonderful tales all the time as batch after batch has gone out into the wide wide world and made their presence felt and are making their presence felt all over the world today but today i want to leave you with the two ideas that are very central to the impact that you will make on the world i have called these thoughts from the ambience and mindset that we have tried to fashion for you here at the university the first is related to the concept of creating a holding environment wherever you go a holding environment is a psychological space that is both safe and uncomfortable at the same time a comfortable environment is not a good environment but an environment that is safe and uncomfortable is an environment that will let you grow uncomfortable because in that environment you promote disruptive creativity too but predominantly a holding environment is what we all need to grow and blossom a supportive environment you have certainly experienced it here during the years that you've been here my advice to you is go out and create it around you an environment where people will feel loved accepted provoked nurtured and allowed to blossom make yourselves persons who are a joy to have around to work with and to grow together that's what i mean by being ambassadors of a holding environment wherever you go the second has more to do with what sort of person you will be rather than with what you will accomplish accomplish you will i'm sure of that this thought is about a deeper way of being a person of substance it is about getting into the pain of things not having an easy life mystics and religious leaders have been telling us for ages that the one inescapable route to becoming a man or a woman of substance and depth is to learn to get into the pain of things in recent years psychologists and psychotherapists too have developed similar theories especially when they were faced with the reality of having to counsel generations that have been brought up on a heady mix of comfortable living promiscuity to a certain extent and easy access to psychedelic and mood enhancing drugs a big portion of a generation that is that is just one predominant theme in life enjoy learn i would say and repeat and emphasize with all the emphasis at command at my command learn to get into the pain of things if you want to become a dependable human being surprisingly this idea of getting into the pain of things is not primarily about accepting and enduring pain to achieve anything worthwhile in one's life that is a given that is understood it is more about getting into the pain of others because that is what makes us grow into rounded human beings with a capacity to truly empathize with the pain in the universe it is this capacity to empathy or empathize that will lead us to involvement in the stories of those in pain it is that involvement that will lead us to walk along with them and the walk when you get to that stage will take you to commitments that you never thought you were capable of that's the thought that i want to impress upon you today let me share with you an example just a week ago just around this time i was at the netralai for a function to felicitate the fa- felicitate the families of those who had donated their eyes when they passed away either due to old age or to, due to accidents his excellency the governor was a chief guest to at that function it was a moving function to say the least it touched the hearts of every person in that hall as we heard from a few of those families as to how in the midst of their own pain they were able to transcend that pain and bring joy and light into the lives of others it touched all of us there over 400 of us packed into that hall as very few things do let me say again there is much pain in the world today as educated persons as leaders in society 
as Don Bosco University graduates, that pain is a clarion call, is an ever-present call addressed to us, do something about it. That is what you have learned to do here at the university, especially through our multifaceted social commitment programs, to alleviate pain and agony wherever you find it. And I would say again, just as I said about the first thought, go out and heal the pain in the world, in big ways and in small. Believe me, there is no better way to live. And finally, in a nutshell, be passionate about what you do, focus on reaching your destination, treat everyone and everything with respect and compassion, create a congenial environment for all, all around you, wherever you find yourselves, a holding environment. And do not forget to notice and to delve into the pain of those around you. Your future is in your own hands. As the motto says there, carpe diem, seize the day. Let me wish you an abundance of God's blessing as you journey on in hope. Thank you, Jai Hind, and God bless you.